Hi, and welcome to a Bytesays tutorial. A timer, while being a common gameplay mechanic, is for me more than just setting a value that increases or decreases every second. You should, in my opinion, be able to not just start and stop the timer, but also update the remaining time after, for instance, picking up a power-up. And that is exactly what we're doing today. Add a new text field by right-clicking in the hierarchy, choose UI and then Text Mesh Pro. If you haven't already, import the assets here. Position it wherever you deem fit and add some styling. I'll call mine Timer Text. In the Scripts folder, create a new script and call it Timer. Drag it onto your text field in the hierarchy. Before leaving Unity, create another script called Event Manager. Double click the file to edit it. For this tutorial, I will be using events. If you haven't already, make sure to watch my video about those if anything is unclear. In the top here, make sure to include unityengine.events. Remove the start and the update functions, and make the event manager static by adding the keyword static between public and class. And since the event manager won't derive from mono behavior, you can remove it here. Since we already know what we want our timer to do, we can start by creating all those events. First, we want our timer to be able to both start and stop. Public static event unity action timer start as well as public static event unity action timer stop. But we also want to be able to update the time value, so continue with public static event unity action that takes a parameter of type float, timer update. Now, the methods to trigger the events. Public static void on timer start, timer start. And basically the same to stop the timer. Public static void on timer stop, timer stop. The method to update the time looks a bit different, but check out my video about events if this doesn't make sense. Public static void on timer update float value timer update, and we're passing value here. Go ahead and pause the video if you feel like things are going too fast. If we want to add time to our timer, we can pass a positive value, and if we, for some reason, want to decrease the value, we can pass a negative value. That's all we need, three events and their corresponding methods, so let's jump into our timer script. Start by including system at the top as well as TM Pro. Create a reference to the text field with private TMP underscore text timer text. Since you'll be able to use this timer both as a countdown as well as a stopwatch, we can control this with an enum. Just type enum timer type followed by the types in curly braces, countdown and stopwatch. Now type serialize field in square brackets, followed by private timer type and timer type in camel case. Now we can easily choose which to use in the editor. Now for easy testing, we'll create a variable for the time to display here. Type serialize field in square brackets, followed by private float time to display. I'll set the default value to 60 seconds, but since it's serialized, we can just change the value in the editor. And finally, add a private variable of type boolean and call it is running. Probably self-explanatory, but it's just to check whether or not the timer is currently running. Add an awake function and initialize the text field with timer text equals get component tmp text. Now let's start listening to our events. Start with the on enable method. To start subscribing to our events, follow along. Check out my video about events if these don't get auto completed for you. And if you watch my video about events, you know what's next. Don't forget to unsubscribe from the events. Add an onDisable method, copy and paste the lines from the onEnable method, but change the plus equals operators to minus equals operators. Let's keep this simple, since the only purpose of timer start is to set our is running boolean to true, and our timer stop will set it to false. And timer update will simply just update the time to display variable. Now, in our update method, we can check if the timer is running or not before letting it continue. Next, if we're running a countdown, we make sure that our time to display value isn't less than zero, meaning there's still some time left. Now that we're sure that the timer is running and there's still time left, we can start subtracting from or adding to the value. So, in short, if we're running a countdown, we will be subtracting from the value, otherwise we're adding to it. That's really all it takes, and now we're ready to print the time on the display. I will be using time span to keep the code clean. Time span, time span, equals time span from seconds, time to display. 
Now we'll just have to format the text in the text field. This will return the minutes, seconds and milliseconds. Now, whenever you want to start the timer, you just have to call Event Manager on Timer Start from wherever you want to start it. I'll do it in my Game Manager to start it as soon as the game starts. And to stop it, you can just call Event Manager on Timer Stop. I will do it in the update method of the timer script. If the remaining time is less than zero, we should stop the timer, and this sets the is running boolean back to false. You could, of course, just set the boolean to false here, but that kind of defeats the purpose. By telling the event manager that the timer has stopped, every class listening to changes can now act accordingly. This could trigger a game over animation in one class, and play an audio clip in another. Let's just make sure this works before moving on. You can now see our countdown working. If we change the type to stopwatch, we will instead start adding to the time. So, let's have a look at updating the time in our timer. I have prepared two simple buttons here. One adds and the other subtracts 5 seconds. The code could be used in a power-up or wherever you want. The way this works is we tell our event manager that we want to update the time, and our event manager will tell its subscribers, in our case the timer script, which listens to changes and adds or subtracts the number of seconds we passed as a parameter. I will leave you with a challenge. Try to add functionality for resetting the timer. Just let me know if you have any questions, and I will do my best to help you. The code is available on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.